A month ago, she was campaigning to be Labour's deputy leader. Today, she'll dress up in full personal protective gear to treat coronavirus patients in A&E. Labour's doctor, Rosanna Allen Khan, has answered the call of the NHS and returned to work at her local hospital in South London. She's joining us now. Hello to you. Thank you for joining us. My goodness me, quite a change for you over the last months. How are you adapting to it? Yes, well, at the end of the day, it is an honour and a privilege to go back to work. Obviously, I never stopped doing shifts when I became an MP, but I've really ramped up the shifts that I'm doing now, and I'm back in there on the front line. And as far as I'm concerned, saving lives is the only thing that matters. So, yes, it is a far cry from the campaign to become Labour's deputy leader, but really, for me, this is absolutely the most important thing. So it's a pleasure. Yeah, politician to front line, but also, daughter, we heard you speaking in the House of Commons about your dad. This is what you had to say. My NHS colleagues on the front line are already stressed with the pressure that they face. Last night, I visited my father in a care home and am acutely aware that I may have fed him for the very last time. We are in unprecedented times. I would like to know, where was the forward planning for PPE for our NHS and care staff? How's he doing? He's OK. He's not eating much because he only really eats if my brother or I go and feed him. And obviously we have really been observing the social distancing measures and not going to visit him. There has been talk of us seeing him from the roadside if the care staff bringing to the window near the garden so we can wave at him so he doesn't feel as though we've forgotten him. We haven't done that yet. So much criticism mounting now for the government, not least because of what has been described as a lack of PPE for frontline workers. What would Labour be doing differently at this point? For me, I'm actually going to answer this question not as a Labour politician. I'm going to answer this as a doctor on the front line. And I'm hearing from colleagues all around the country that, quite frankly, it is an abomination. That, that the NHS and care staff are simply not protected. When I did my shift on Saturday night, I had paramedics coming into St George's saying that they'd only been given one set of personal protective equipment for an entire 12-hour shift. If you think of the numbers of houses that they go to during that time, we have already seen that we have lost a nurse and four doctors, and there will be many more to come. People in the NHS and in our care service, they go to work to save lives. They are out there working today to save our mothers, our fathers, our brothers, our sisters, they absolutely have to be protected. So my plea as an NHS frontline worker would be, please, please, where was the forward planning on this? And let's make sure that everybody that needs the PPE gets it now. As a politician uh, and also as a doctor, where are we on testing? Well, I wrote to Matt Hancock just two days ago and I said it's simply unacceptable that there is not the testing available for NHS staff, but also that there isn't mass testing more widely available. In the same PMQ that you kindly played a clip of a moment ago, I asked these very things. We knew about the first case in the UK on the 31st of January. We can see around the world that in South Korea and in Germany, they stepped up testing immediately and they were able to save lives. I wrote to Matt Hancock and I said to him, who are we engaging? Which companies in the UK and around the world are we engaging to get this right? Yes, I welcome the fact that Sir Simon Stevens said that NHS staff would be able to be tested but there's some hospitals that are only able to test two doctors or nurses a day we simply do not have the capacity where was the forward planning on this we knew this was coming and quite simply it's an abomination that we are not able to roll this out at least for nhs and care staff but it's a pandemic we need to know the beast that we are fighting at the moment and we can't do that if we can't see it and without mass testing we don't know what we're working with. but I suppose a big confusion is about this testing is, you know, you have the test, but the next day you might pick it up. Are you going to, as a frontline worker, have to be tested every single day? No, that's not how it works. You test it if you have symptoms. So essentially, if you have symptoms and you're better after three days, at this point in time, you have to self-isolate for a continued period. If you know if you've had the test, you can go back to work because we already know that a quarter of NHS frontline staff are currently off work. That's making it much harder for us to do the job that we need to do of saving people's lives. OK, you are on the front line at the moment, as we said, doing your job uh, for the A&E, answer the call when most needed. Um, if you get the call on Saturday to be the deputy leader, will you also do that? 
Well, of course, I mean, it's been a complete honour to stand. And I stood as the outsider and I've really enjoyed the campaign. And I've been so honoured that Labour members have allowed me to run in this race and got me this far. If I win on Saturday, I would be probably quite surprised. I'd be very happy and I would take on the role with conviction. But there is not a single moment that I'm going to let down my NHS staff on the front line. Working to save lives is a priority, whether that be as a politician or as a doctor or both. OK, and what would you most, the first thing, if you were a deputy leader, what would be the first thing that you would want or you would pressurise the government to do? Well, I would actually continue what I've been doing already, which is pushing for testing, pushing for PPE, but also the question that I really want answered, which I've been very vocal about in this last week, is why are we only isolating the seven days when the WHO recommendation is 14 days and that is what is being adopted by the rest of the world? We can see the numbers of deaths arising on a daily basis. We have only recently put in social distancing measures. I want full transparency on what is it that we seem to know that the rest of the world doesn't. Because it's not simply OK to self-isolate for seven days when the WHO have made it very clear you can still be infectious. Look, we're all going to work to save lives in the NHS. We need the government and the public to help us to help them.